Hiya, and welcome back to Tennis Ace. The game that teaches that apparently every single character except the love interest is hot. Seriously. Like, like Shoichi might be the one exception. Maybe Haruki, but oh my god. They are... Ah. Ah. Anyways, let's just hop right in. Sorry, it's just, you two are too paranoid. Paranoid? Look, it does annoy me that you guys would give me shit for stuff you don't know about, but I'm not going to be mad at you. Right? I know you two are only trying to help me. I can appreciate that, even if I don't appreciate how you tried to do it. So wait, you're not mad at us? Annoyed, but not mad. You don't have to worry about it. Huh, so I was worrying over nothing here. I guess this is partly my fault. I should have at least given you guys a basic explanation of my family dynamics before bringing you into my house. It was stupid of me to think I could do it without my grandmother or father noticing. Honestly, I'm slightly uncomfortable that you invited us over without their permission. I don't need anyone's permission to invite people here. The only reason I live here is because they want me to, so they want me to, so they have an easier time keeping tabs on me. I could move out if I wanted to, but it's not worth the hassle. Couldn't your father just stop giving you money if you tried that? He could, but with the amount I have saved up, I could live comfortably without a job for many, many years. Are you kidding me? How much you have saved up? Haya. And that's a question I'm not comfortable with answering. Jeez, you're such a tease. T tease? Don't mind her, she's just being annoying for the sake of being annoying. Hey. Ow! You really don't think before you talk, do you? That was obviously going to end up like this. Haya. Are you calling me violent? Is the sky blue? The amount of sass. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, this this game this game does not have any chill. It does not have any chill whatsoever. What? That means yes. He's calling you violent. Ouch. You were lucky Alex isn't here anymore. Otherwise, he'd have already thrown you out the window. Is it bad that I can totally imagine him doing that? It's a terrifying thought now that I think about it. I think I'll refrain from hitting you again while we're here. I wish you'd refrain from hitting me at all, but baby steps, I guess. Hey, Kekun. I know you said that you'll just ignore what your dad said, but aren't you in trouble with your grandmother? That's the thing I was worried about. I don't really care what she has to say about me, but the fact that Alex got punished for it really pisses me off. What kind of punishment would she inflict on him? She'll probably have him reassigned for a few days, so I won't be able to talk to him much, not to mention a payment cut this month. That's just cruel! Unfortunately, cruel is just child's play for her. I'm just going to pay Alex back the difference once I find out how much he discounted from his salary. Jeez, the fact that you can afford to just say stuff like that is scary. Sometimes I forget that you really are a pampered rich boy. Pampered? Who else will go around saying stuff like, It doesn't matter if he got punished, I'll just pay him more. And that makes me pampered? I thought I was being responsible here. And that makes uh. again. Don't mind her. She's just trying to annoy you. But I'm not. But I'm not sure you can pay him back for the money he lost because of you. But that doesn't make up for all the other stuff. Other stuff? Yeah, getting him berated by your bosses, getting blamed for something that wasn't your fault, stuff like that. Giving him money won't make him feel less crappy over that. Ah! Kakun's shoulders slump as he leans forward, rubbing the bridge of his nose. I never thought of that. Are you sure Alex would even care about that? No offense, but the dude didn't, didn't look like the type to be bothered by it in the slightest. You're just assuming he can't be hurt because he looks stoic? That's just rude, Yuichi-kun. Rude? How am I rude? Mizukuchi-san is right. Alex might look and act very detached, but he's not made of stone. He has feelings of his own, too. If he didn't, he wouldn't have bothered befriending me or putting up with my crap. That's... I can't really argue with that. Ugh. Every time I think I've made some progress on the way I act, I'm reminded that there's still stuff that I need to fix. No one's perfect. You just have to be aware of your own flaws. Said one of the least self-aware people that I know. Hey, I'm aware of my problems. I just choose not to do anything about them. What? Then what right do you have to chastise him? Saya shrugs, shooting me a devious smile. Do as I say, not as I do. You're impossible. Tee <laughs> Don't try to play it off by acting cute. It's fine. I don't mind it much. See? Keiko agrees with me. You're far too lenient with her. 
I seem to remember you doing a lot more stuff that I let slide than Mizuguchi-san. No comment. Ugh, there's a lot of things I'll have to think over after all. Should we just leave you so you can be alone? What? God, no. The last thing I want right now is to be alone. I think you guys underestimate how much peace of mind it gives me having you around. Um... <laughs> Huh, really? Yeah, I've never really felt comfortable in here. This place might be my house, but it's certainly not a home. Having you guys around here makes it a lot more tolerable, though. I dare s I dare even say that it's fun. Glad to hear we can help. Yeah, if you ever need someone to talk to, you know you're always you know we're always here for you. Thanks, I appreciate it. Mushy stuff aside, how about we look for something else we can do until Kuroda comes back with the food? How about you tell us a little more about the band you joined? The band? Why do you want to know about that? I got to meet your bandmates and all, and all that, but I think, but I don't think Saya did. Yeah, that's true. I only heard about you joining a band. I have no idea what they're like. Well, I'm pretty sure you're in the same class as some of our members. Really? Who? Ichigo-san and Kagaho-san. They're our vocalist and bassist. Wait, really? Ichigo-chan in a rock band? No way. It was really surprising to me, too. None of the girls look like the type to be in a band, but even so, they are. And they're all really good at it, too. It's true. I heard them playing once and I was blown away by it. No fair! I want to see them playing too! I'll try asking them for permission to bring you later. I don't think Minazuki would be against it in the slightest. Yeah! Ichigo-chan and I are friendly with each other. I guess that's fair. Do you guys have any idea when you're going to perform your first show? They were wanting to do it at the festival. They were wanting to do it at the festival. I've been trying to help organize it. Organize it? You're not performing with them? Me? God, no. There's no way I'd stand in front of a crowd to sing or play. And yet you're totally fine with doing it to play tennis? This and that are totally different things. I'm not so sure about that. Besides, Minazuki already wanted you to sing with her, didn't she? Again, there's no way I'd do that. No, but you have such a good voice! I already said no. Minazuki really wants you to sing, though. I don't really care what she wants. There's no way I'm standing on a stage. Why not? I never, I know I never heard you singing before, but what's the harm in trying? It's embarrassing. So it's not because you don't think you're good enough. You're just embarrassed. God, why are you two being so pushy with this? Being embarrassed is just part of the reason. I honestly don't think I'm anywhere good enough to play in a band. Oh, come on. We've all already told you what... We've all already told you that you're good. Mizu Minazuki also heard you sing, and she thinks you're good at what... And she also thinks you're good. What other confirmation do you need? It's not that simple. Besides... They don't just want me to sing. They want to play guitar, too. Then play guitar. You can't just tell me to play the guitar. You have no idea if I'm even good at it. I'm sure you are. You are being way too agreeable about this. Look, all I know is that I really believe you can do this stuff. I think you should give it a try. I I don't think I could. Gee, stop being such a wuss and just try already. Hey, Saichan, don't say it like that. Oh, what is this? Some kind of weird good friend, bad friend routine? Oh, so I'm a bad friend, huh? I mean, wow, Mizuguchi-san, your words are so comforting. That's more like it. Keisuke breathes out in relief after avoiding near certain death. I'm just not really comfortable putting myself out there with music. You know, maybe if I were better with a guitar, I would consider that. But while I can always improve with guitar or tennis, I'm stuck with the voice I have. The voice you have is amazing, though. You were just saying that to make me feel better. Really? You think I'm a nice enough guy that I'd put up with something I hate just to avoid hurting your feelings? You do it with Yurata and his cooking, remember? What is going on outside? There is something going on outside. Hiya. Is it not there anymore? Okay. Oh! Oh shit! He's right about it. You were the last person I'd imagine calling someone out like that, Yuichi-kun. What? You're kidding! I'll totally do that. Nuh-uh. You're kind of a wimp. What? How can you just say something like that? Because, unlike you, I just told people the truth. See? If Mizuguchi-san were to tell me that I'm good at something, then I'd believe it. So what you're saying is that you just don't trust me to be brutally honest? Exactly. You both suck. Perhaps. It's possible. Young master, I've arrived with your food. Well, time to have dinner. Yay! Sushi! Oh jeez, I need to like... Say it, not spray it. Oh my god, like a bunch of... Uh, uh. Keikun sits around on the corridor looking up at the night sky. Sai has gone home about half an hour ago, something about needing to be back early. 
I decided to stick around for a bit longer before heading back. Man, it used to be that you could see all of the stars from here. Nowadays, they barely ever show up. I wonder what happened. It's probably from the light pollution. Hmm, I guess that sounds about right. I never really took you for the type to just sit around looking at the stars. Well, you'd be about right in assuming that. This isn't something I do often after all. I guess the mood just struck me today. If nothing else, at least you seem to be feeling better. Much. Having you guys around definitely made my day a lot better. It's... It's really nice to have friends, huh? Pfft, that should be an obvious thing already, bunny boy. I could correct you, but I'm pretty sure you already know the difference between a rabbit and a hare anyway. And yeah, I suppose it's... It, and I know it's supposed to be an obvious thing, but still. I was always afraid of letting people in here because I was scared they'd be more interested in the perks that come with befriending a guy with my social status. Now I just feel like I was worried over nothing. I wouldn't say it was over nothing. I still think I should be careful with the people you choose to spend time with. Just don't close yourself to the possibilities entirely. Yeah, I guess you're right about... Yeah, I guess you're right. Pawprint Press trying to steal my money. Uh, thanks for encouraging me so much, Yuichi san I'm glad I decided to listen to you. Great! You finally come to the realization that I'm awesome and I'm always right. <laughs> I wouldn't go that far. Still, you were right in this case. I should have just been more open from the beginning. It might sound silly to you, but I've spent the past years of my life always worrying about how people saw me, what they thought of me, whether they treated me nicely because of who I am or where I'm from. It feels really good to be able to just let loose and have fun with friends. You could have been doing this from the start if you weren't so reserved. I guess we should be thanking Kenma-san for this, huh? That cocky lynx? Why would we be thanking him? I mean, think about it. The only reason I found out about your family and was... Able to give you advice was because he pissed you off so much that I had to calm you down. I I guess that's true. I still don't like that guy, though. <laughs> that's fine. You don't have to like him. Besides, I doubt this was his goal anyway. Good to see that we, we at least agree on that. I hope you'll keep being patient with me. I know I have a lot of things I need to work on, but I want to eventually become someone you can relax around and treat like just another member of the group. Don't be ridiculous, you already are! <laughs> you have no idea how happy it makes me to hear that. I enjoy spending time with you quite a bit. You should probably be heading home soon, though. It's already getting pretty late. I guess you're right. I'll go call a car for you. Thanks, much appreciated. But before that, though... No, no, it's totally fine. It's totally fine. Keisuke was only kissing the homies goodnight. Before I can process what just happened, I feel something pressing against my cheek for only just a second. What? Keisuke stands a few feet away from me, chuckling. D did you just- I gave you a small peck on the cheek, yes. Would you do something like that? It's just a way of saying thank you. You don't say thank you by kissing. And they do in Europe. Victor told me so. We're not in Europe, though. You shouldn't worry about it so much. It's- it's just an innocent peck on the cheek out of gratefulness. If you say so, I'll go get a car now. Wait for me here. Why is my heart beating so fast all of a sudden? Did he just do that? To, just did he do that just to tease me? That does sound like a Kaikun thing to do. Ugh, great. Now my head's all tied up in knots. May twenty second, Monday, day fourteen. I sit around in the second floor hallway, waiting for a certain someone to finally come out of his class. God, why does he spend so much time in there and after class has already ended for the day? Once I hear the sound of the door opening, my attention is dragged away from my phone and towards it. Keisuke stands in front of the door, looking at me with confusion. Iwichi-san, what are you doing here? I go to school here, remember? Not here in school. Here on my floor. Damn, I know you're rich, but I wasn't aware you had bought the whole floor. Ha ha, very funny. But to properly answer your question, I came by to see you. Evidently, as far as I know, you don't know anyone else in this floor. Then why did you ask me in the first place? That's not what I was- Ugh! Never mind. You're just teasing me, aren't you? What was your first clue? So, to what do I owe the pleasure? Given the look on your face, it really doesn't sound like much of a pleasure. 
Don't make me smack the answer out of you. <laughs> okay, okay, sorry. I came by to see what you were doing. I thought you might be going to get your going to your band today. It's not my band. Besides, his voice trails off without even finishing his sentence. Is something up? No, it's nothing. I was just thinking some stuff over. I guess I'm going to end up going today after all. You seem to sound a little more excited about it. Didn't you just choose to join their band because you wanted to be around music? Great! Can I come with you? I attempt to distract him from whatever thoughts he's mulling over by being extra cheerful. Hey, if it works for June, then it might work for me too, right? What? You want to come with me? Why? Why wouldn't I? It's a band! It's cool! Besides, I, I enjoyed hearing them play the last time I was there. I... I can't just take you there without permission. Why? Did they not like me being around last time? Well, not exactly. They said they liked having an audience. Then what's the harm in taking me? It's not about... Oh, forget it. You're just going to keep insisting until I agree, aren't you? Sounds like someone knows me well. It really does, huh? When we walk inside the room, I'm greeted to the cool and dry air conditioned air. The sensation of breathing, it kind of makes the inside of my nose itch a little, but it's still pleasant nonetheless. A good afternoon. Case Case says a greeting out loud without even checking if anyone is in first. Seems that the room is empty at a first glance. The instruments are all lying around haphazardly and everything seems to be in disarray. There's no one here? Probably in the control room. Kagaho-san? A head peeks out from the door on the far side of the room, looking at us with curiosity. Once he recognizes Keisuke, the raven walks out, lifting an eyebrow. Oh, Keisuke, I see you have a guest today. Hello, Michi Mia. I notice lack of an honorific inside of my head with a little bit of amusement. I guess it's safe for me to drop it too in that case. Good afternoon. Sorry for the intrusion. Raven crosses his arms, flashing me a polite smile. It's no bother. If you're sticking around to watch us rehearse, then I can already imagine some people would enjoy the opportunity to show off. That's what I'm counting on. Kagaho-san, why aren't you in uniform? The raven looks down at his clothes for a second before his eyes flicker back to the hair. Well, class is over for the day, so I didn't see any reason to keep them on. I can understand that sort of attitude from the others, but I've never seen you do something like that. Did something happen? The raven lifts an eyebrow. I think you're trying to read a little too much into something innocuous, unless you have something on your mind that's worrying you. Keisuke shifts and, for the first time today, I notice him hugging his arms extra close to his body. I just... Is something going on? No, not... not exactly. Kagaho-san, do you mind talking to me alone for a second? There's something I need to ask you about. Keikun, is everything alright? Yeah, just give me a second. The raven nods, making a gesture with his head towards the separate booth. The two walk there and then close the door, leaving me alone in the soundproof room. Or at least they think they did. I can see that the door was just barely left ajar. I know I shouldn't, but I can't resist the urge to eavesdrop. I can confirm I confirm that they that I can't see them through the looking glass and decide that if I can't see them, then they can't see me. I stealthily make my way towards the door, ready to listen on their conversation. A rumor? Kagaho's voice is the first I hear. I can't really make out what he's thinking just from the tone of his voice. But he sounds somewhat amused when he asks. I heard the girls murmuring to themselves when they thought I was out of earshot. Something about Ichigo-san moving away. Then I saw you in nothing but your daily clothes and no one else around, so... So? His voice is calm and soothing, almost paternal. Despite the two of us being in the same year and having studied in the same class once, we never interacted much. Still, the little I know of him is that he's not the, res is that he's the responsible type. I guess him and Shoichi would get along in that regard. Although the dry sense of humor I saw the last time I came by was definitely caught me by surprise. I was just worried the band might disband. Wait, their band might disband? But Keisuke just joined them not too long ago. Now they're dissolving? I can't really say much on the matter. Ichigo's business is her own to disclose. You should ask her about it. I will say that we've no intention of dissolving the band, though. Kagaho's voice sounds really serious from where I stand. It's like his words are denying what was said, but his voice seems inclined to agree. If that even makes any sense. Ugh, I suck at reading people's mood from their voices. Wait. Is this what Keikun was thinking about when I talked to him in front of his class? And and the band would keep going even if she left? You're asking me for information I'd have no way of giving you. I don't make decisions for the others, Keisuke. All I'm saying is that right now things are fine. You're reading too much into it. And so there's really no underlying reason for you to be wearing those clothes. I hear a dry chuckle. The raven's voice echoes, almost like a squawk, and yes, I know that's speciesist. As much... As much reason I'd have for wearing any other type of clothes, if my clothes make you uncomfortable, I could strip for you. Would that make you feel better? And no thanks, I already see my fair share of naked bodies in the locker room. I'm good. I hear the sound of the door handle being rustled and immediately bolt back to where I was before. Act natural. Act natural. Huh, the door was open? 
I could have sworn I closed it. Oh, this? Sorry, I forgot to say. The pin is kind of broken a little, so you have to pull on it hard for it to actually go into its groove. Otherwise, it just slides itself open again. Seriously? How many issues I had... How many issues have I had to have fixed just these past two weeks alone? How does all this stuff show up broken? My guess is that the cleaning staff doesn't really know how to deal with all the equipment. A lot of this stuff here is really delicate. The door is bigger and heavier to help with the soundproofing, but it uses regular lock. It probably couldn't handle the weight is what you're saying. It's as good a guess as any. Is everything alright? I try acting as if I have no idea what they just discussed. Good thing I'm not as, not as crappy a liar as Shoichi is. I'd have been busted before even saying a word. Oh, I forgot you were there for a second. Yeah, everything's fine. Just had some band matters to discuss, that's all. Hey, don't just forget that I'm here! Anyway, I'll make sure to inform the faculty office so this can be fixed soon. Thank you, Keisuke. Did he just ignore me? Where is everyone else, by the way? Are they inside the booth or something like that? Oh, no, they're just late. I've been listening to some recordings while I wait for them to arrive. Ichigo is supposed to be meeting with the council president. I have no idea where the others are, though. With Shoichi? Why? He eyes me with curiosity, almost cracking a smile. Ah, that's true. You're his best friend, aren't you? Yeah, I am. Is something going on? Ichigo-san wanted to book the school auditorium for the band to perform in during the festival. She's probably negotiating with him. Negotiating? Student council accolades common the common areas of the school for interested clubs. Not all of us are capable of using our rooms for display, so we have to get spaces in other areas. The auditorium is the only space where we could possibly do a show, but it's also one of the most popular areas. Lots of clubs set booths there every year, and we are basically asking for it all to ourselves. Oh, wow. That sounds like a difficult thing to get. It is. Ichigo has been going at it for almost a month already, but he still won't budge. It's not like he's completely against giving it to us. It's just hard for him to reallocate other clubs, I'd imagine. I could try asking for you guys if that would make things easier. Thank you for the offer, but we don't really want to use personal connections to our advantage. If you wanted that, we'd have asked Keisuke a long time ago. Not like I'd have agreed in the first place. Also true. Oh, sorry, I didn't know. It's alright, like I said, I appreciate the offer, I just want to do things properly. So you guys are going to be performing on the festival then? Do you have any original songs or will we be doing covers? It's mostly covers. Even though the band has been together for quite some time, we haven't had much success with composing until recently. We only have two original songs written so far and only one of them is rehearsed. Kagaho-san. Keisuke is the one behind our compositions. Did you know he's quite a talented compo- Kagaho-san! Keisuke's voice goes up a few octaves when he interjects, trying to cut the raven off mid-sentence. Oh, sorry. Wasn't I supposed to tell him that? Wow. I didn't know you also composed, Keikun. I- I- I thought all he could do was compose until you and Ichigo told us he could sing and play, too. Can we please stop talking about this? Sure, if you're uncomfortable playing in front of us, then what's your prerogative? Then that's your prerogative. We're just here to make music. That's not what I- Never mind! hey -o. A good afternoon. The two girls walk into the room, effectively interrupting the conversation we'd been having so far. Not that I'm going to complain, the mood wasn't exactly the most comfortable here. Your eyes immediately fall on me. The coyote immediately goes stiff, taking a step back when she notices my presence. Oh, hi! It's you again! Kei-chan's friend! Uh, don't call me Kei-chan. Yup, that's me! Kei-chan's friend! I brought my tennis bag with me. I'll hit you with my racket, I swear! Alright, alright, calm down. I was only joking. Hey, Kagaho-san! What happened to your uniform? Is everyone going to ask me that question? You usually never get changed when we rehearse. I just wanted to switch things up. There's no harm in that. I suppose. Come on, Shoko-chan. Let's get changed. The coyote nods, following the other girl without a single word being said. They're getting changed? Here? We have a small bathroom adjoined with that control room. The girls tend to go get changed there instead of using the public bathroom on the floor. I thought only the sports clubs had private bathrooms. This room used to be used for the school's marching band rehearsals. That's why it's so big. We just got lucky to be assigned it after the marching band was disbanded. So that bathroom was supposed to be for the band's instructor to use? Pretty much. Now it's ours, though. They tried assigning us a regular club room at first, but the noise complaints piled up pretty fast, and this was the only soundproof room they had. <laughs> what about the class? What about the classic music club's room? Up until June transferred here, that was never used. It's not soundproof. I imagine that's because pianos, violins, and the likes don't tend to be as loud as electric guitars, drums, and other rock instruments. Oh, that does sound like a good point. Once again, the sound of the door opening snaps our attention away from our conversation. Hey, hey, sorry I'm a little late. The monkey, who if I remember correctly is their guitarist, immediately looks at me, openly grinning at my sight. Are we going to have an audience today? Cool. He then looks over at the other two members of his club currently present. His eyes linger on the raven as he raises an eyebrow. Kagaho-san, how come you're not where- Is everyone seriously going to ask me that question? The raven snaps, for a second dropping his composed attitude. 
His face flashes with a scowl as his voice echoes his profound annoyance at the repeated questions. Okay, okay, forget I ask. Sheesh, someone's pissy today. No, you just happen to be the third person asking me that question, and I've already become fed up. How is that my fault? Don't just snap at me. Sorry, I think I might have kicked off this issue. If you're sorry, then how come you're smiling? The monkey pouts, his face starting to get red. From what I've seen last time I was here and what I'm seeing now, I guess he's not the most mature person around. I mean, he did throw a temper tantrum when he thought I had dated their vocalist before. Kurusu, don't forget to breathe. I think your lips are starting to turn blue. I am breathing! Can we stop acting like children already? Both of you? I don't see what about my behavior makes me a child. Of course you don't. You're too slick to be caught misbehaving, aren't you? You are the one who said it. Yes, what an odd coincidence, isn't it? Now can we focus on rehearsing? Are the girls here already? Miu and Shoko are. Ichigo will probably still be a while. She's in the middle of negotiations. What? Then how are we supposed to rehearse without her? You know her your riffs, don't you? That's all you need to rehearse. But it's just not the same without Ichigo-san. What's well, not the same without Ichigo? The girls walk out of the adjoining room, both changed out of their uniforms. Since the monkey had been since the monkey had been speaking so loudly, they both walk with their eyes glued to him, looks of curiosity plastered over their faces. Kagoho-san wants to rehearse without her. Well, yeah. She said she was going to be late today because of her negotiations with the council president. What's the problem with that? What? You don't think there's anything wrong with that? We can't rehearse without her! I actually don't see any problem either. The coyote eyes me, her eyes lingering for a second before she finishes her sentence. Damn, her eyes look really scary and unfriendly. Does she Does she not like me or something? The raccoon, noticing my sudden discomfort, elbows her friend. Shoko-chan, don't just stare at him like that. He'll get the wrong idea. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to... She stammers out her words, her eyes suddenly becoming fixed to her shoes. Please try to have a little more tact, won't you? What are you talking about? I'm all about tact. Sure. Kagaho-san, the raven, leans up towards me, whispering on my ear. Please don't mind her. She's really shy with newcomers, and some people think she's stan she comes off as being standoffish. Oh, I see. Message received. Well, should we get to it? What about Ichigo-san? Look, I understand your reservations, but there's less than two weeks until the festival, and you guys only have three hours a day to rehearse. Do you really want to lose up to an entire hour because of that? B but it's as Case Case says, we need to use our time to its fullest. We have two original songs to play, and we haven't even finished learning the first one. Even if I'm being optimistic, I still see us having a hard time getting them perfected by then. We can't afford to be wasting time now, unless you want our first show to be nothing more than song covers. In which case, good luck getting any attention with that. Uh... All right, let's get started then. All right, I'm going to be watching from inside the control room with you, Ichi-san. All right, we'll do some warming up before we get into it. Feel free to call us out if we make any mistakes. I don't think I'm qualified to do that sort of thing. It's your song. You're the only one who can tell us if we're performing it correctly. Oh yeah, no, totally. That's, um... Oh, what's wrong? I'm to have your friend hearing your original composition. Sh shut up. Nice job establishing your authority. You're getting teased by a freshman. Don't you start too. Come on, just come with me to the control room. I walk into the so-called control room for the first time. The first thing that stands out to me is just how old the equipment inside looks. Holy shit, are these CRT monitors? Just how old is this stuff? Most of it is unusable. I tried offering to buy new equipment for the band, but they flat out refused. All the instruments and amps they have are, they use are stuff they bought for themselves, and they're all proud of that. Not that it would matter, though. We don't really do any recording, so the only thing that we need to have is fun we need to have functional is a sound monitor. You mean the CRTs? No, no. A sound monitor is something you use to monitor the sound frequencies. We plug a headphone to it so we can listen to what's going on inside as we Ellis check each mic separately. Notice how we have more than one microphone inside? We're not just picking up the sum of the sounds inside. We have mics placed to record each instrument separately, too. It allows a sound engineer to monitor every single player in the room. That's why it's called a monitor. It's the only equipment in this room that isn't outdated past the point of uselessness. Oh! I don't know any of that. Damn, I feel so stupid when with him having to explain all this stuff to me. Doesn't help that he acts as if it was the most basic stuff in the world. Here, I'm going to plug in another pair of headphones so you can listen too. Just don't touch anything else, okay? Sh sure. Keisuke hands me a pair of earbuds and, at the same time, grabs another form one for himself. He is. He is a little... He's whiny. He's a little bitch. He's the tennis. He's. I swear, he's going to be the tennis ace version of Alex from Ad Astra. He puts one on his left ear, leaving the other off. I assume he did it so he could still talk to me. Regardless, I imitate him, trying my best not to look like too much of a novice with this stuff. 
earbuds? I thought you'd be using on-ear headphones. And there are no good models out there for hairs. Our ears are too big and that causes the sound to bleed. A good pair of reference earbuds are better since they completely close the ear canal. Damn, you really know a lot about this stuff. What, mixing? Not at all. I had to research a lot of this stuff when I first joined so I could be useful. It wouldn't surprise me if I were wrong about some stuff. Well, in that case, you sound really confident about something you don't really know anything about. Wouldn't be the first time. Keisuke, can we start? I hear someone's voice echoing inside my left ear. Looking through the window to the next room, I see the raven looking directly at the two of us. All of the band members are in their respective positions with their instruments. I have to admit, even the meekest looking member of their band looks a hell of a lot more imposing once they have their instruments in hand. They really look like people who know what they're doing. The air of confidence they all have is stifling, if I'm being honest. Kakun presses a button and talks into a microphone that is dangling from a pedestal near his mouth. Sure, whenever you want. The raven nods, sharing a knowing glance with the other members. Almost as if on cue, their drummer, the raccoon girl, clacks her drumsticks a few times as if to make a countdown. Then they all start playing all at once. No one is even a beat late on their start. Their synchrony leaves me completely astounded. Whoa! I have a hard time even trying to come up with words. It's just... I can't even begin to put it into words. Hmm? I look over at Keikun sitting next to me and see him frowning, staring at their performance with the complete opposite reaction of mine. Is something wrong? They're not playing like usual. What do you mean? Half of them are doing just fine, but I think Ichigo-san not being here is making some of them uneasy. Really? Who? Guitar and keyboard. That's Kurusu and Shoko. Our bass and drums are fine. They're setting the rhythm just as they should be and are making sure no one goes too wild. I have to commend them for that. But both the guitar and the keyboard are playing slightly off. It's not a huge difference, but any difference no matter how small can throw off the other members of the band, too. Look at Kagaho-san. He's definitely noticed. I look through the window once more, seeing the raven looking between Kurusu and Shoko with a frown. How is he able to focus on playing while also keeping the others in line? The guy's a monster! Kagaho-san is pretty amazing like that. As if he read my thoughts, Keikun starts talking about the raven, looking at bassist with what looks to me like envy. He's like the band's guardian or something like that. He keeps a death grip on their rhythm and always manages to keep the rowdier members from going too crazy. He's the only reason the band can play in synchrony. In fact, he's probably the only reason this band can even function as a unit in the first place. He tends to act as a mediator for everyone all the time, and he's always keeping an eye on everything that's happening. That guy is probably as close to having superpowers as a person can be. Really? Because you know a bunch of really hardworking people already. You sure he's the closest to having powers out of all the people we know? And maybe not more than Hirata, but then again, Hirata doesn't have powers. He has a problem. Cheeky. I wonder how I'd react to you hearing you say that. Probably fire a few choice expletives at me. You know, the usual. The fact that you can say that with a smile on your face is a little bit scary, I have to admit. How come? I enjoy your antagonistic to and fro. It's one of the most fun parts of my day. I think Shoichi isn't the only one with the problem. Perhaps, but I admit to nothing. Hmm. Despite the lighthearted conversation, Keisuke's eyes continue to be fixed on the band. He watches them like a hawk, scrutinizing every minor mistake and sound they make, constantly on the search for any mistakes. Yep, this session is a bust, alright. Is it really that bad? At this point, it'd be better for them to not play until Ichigo-san gets here. They're just gonna end up developing bad habits and having a hard time performing it right if they keep this up. Oh, ouch, that's harsh. I'm supposed to be their manager. If it means making sure they're doing well, then I have to be harsh. Sounds like a job you'd enjoy. I like hearing them play and helping them with their arrangements. I don't like being the ass that tells them they're awful. Well, that's your problem. You shouldn't be using the term awful in the first place. That's why you're an ass. You know what I meant. Don't try to be smart with me. I have no idea what you're talking about. Ow! Kakun flicks me on the forehead, chuckling softly as I rub the spot where he just flicked me. A little stinging sensation throbbing on my head. That's cute, but we both know you're not slick enough to pull off a clueless act. I could do it without the flicking, you know! What? It's my way of showing I care. Sure it is. Hang on, they're about to finish it up. He leans forward, pressing a button on the panel again. I think that button might be so the microphone in this room transmits to the recording booth. I'm not really sure. Can you guys take five? Kagaho-san, I need to speak to you. Barely five seconds after they finish their performance, Keisuke begins to speak, snapping everyone's attention towards the window. The raven sighs, putting his bass back on the stand and speaking a few words toward the other band members that I can't hear since he's speaking away from the microphone. It was terrible, wasn't it? Before he's even had time to close the door, Kagaho-san asks that question. It wasn't the best, no. You and Miyu-san were doing a good job, but the others too. They're not used to following e They're used too used to following Ichigo's lead. Without her here, they get lost. Yeah. I don't know if it's the absence of Ichigo-san specifically or just the lack of vocals in general, but they certainly weren't concentrating. This is going to be a problem. I don't know how long Ichigo is going to take, and I'd rather not miss Precious rehearsal time. 
He crosses his arm, leaning back against the door and letting out a big sigh. Is there a helicopter outside? Kagaho's black feathers are, rustle, are ruffled and messy. I can see a be few beads of sweat glistening between them. Is playing an instrument really that much work? Come to think of it, they're all a bit sweaty. And they only played for, what, four minutes? What do you think we should do? Get Ichigo-san here. He sighs again, a strange smile flashing over his beak. Alright, let me rephrase. What do you think we can do? Have just you and me, you san practice. If the other two continue trying, they're gonna end up just making things harder for themselves when they have to correct their mistakes. Alternatively, you could try to point out their mistakes and hope that they can fix it. I'm not very hopeful for that, given how they've just played, though. Nah, you're right. Maybe Shoka could stand some chance of getting back on track, but Kurusu isn't the type to do well with corrections. He's gonna be thrown off his game no matter what. If we try to correct him, he'll just get nervous and try to fix his mistake and end up making more. And that's what I thought, too. The both of them sigh at the same time. Kagahusan closes his eyes, letting his head hang back and lean against the wall. Ah! Oh my god, it's Freddy Fazbear! Keikun, on the other hand, begins to rub his forehead, taking deep breaths. It did sound like that, though. Oh my god. But no, like, the, the, the window in my room is open. The window is open. So, like, a bunch of sound is, like, coming in. And, it, and it, 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 it makes me sad, but oh well. Is he thinking? That's a very dramatic way to think. Just throwing out a crazy suggestion, but maybe you can fill in for Ichigo as a singer until she gets back? And don't be ridiculous. There's no way I could do that. Isn't there? Ichigo seemed to think you could. She said you were a great singer. And that's not... What's the harm in it? You did initially join this club because you wanted to sing and play guitar, didn't you? It's not that simple. Why not? They are a band, not a computer. They are people who are used to working together with certain other people. You can't just swap a part out and have it work normally. Having me there would probably throw them off even more. And there's also the fact that I can't sing in public. Kagaho walks up to Keisuke, putting hand on the hair's shoulder and smiling softly. You won't know until you try. Come on, we really need to make good use of this rehearsal time. It... It doesn't work that way. Come on, it would really help us if you could just... If you could, just for today, no one's asking you to take over for Ichigo forever, just until she gets back. Kagho stares at Keisuke silently, his eyes glued to the hare's face, their eyes not meeting. God damn it, peer pressure. Fine, I'll do it. That's great, thanks for the help. The raven taps Keisuke on the shoulder a few times, smiling. Just don't blame me if I end up making things worse. You'll be fine, stop worrying so much. I hope Ichigo-san doesn't take, too, take much too long. Could you at least try to pretend you're paying attention to me when I'm trying to encourage you? By the way, what should I do while you're over there with them? Just just listen to rehearsal through the headphones and don't touch anything, okay? How cold! You don't trust me to you don't trust me not to break stuff? No. Without even giving me time to react, he plainly utters the word no and walks out of the room. Looking through the window, I see the other band members shooting him quizzical looks and starting to have a conversation. I really hope this all goes well. Forty five minutes later. All right, let's take a break for a bit. Uh, okay. Despite Keikun's presence as a vocalist, the band was still having problems coordinating. Having him around certainly lessened their issues, but I can tell from the faces Kagaho-san was making that things weren't anywhere near perfect yet. Not only that, I could tell Keikun wasn't singing his best. His voice sounded strained, and at times I could hear him choking on notes I know he could easily hit before. This whole thing was starting to leave a sour taste in my mouth by the time Kagaho-san called for a break. Sorry. K, stop being a bitch and sing. Finally. Keikun walks into the room with a sigh, immediately flopping down on his chair. Ariana Urushihara. He can hit those high notes like Ariana Grande. Ah. Ah. I cannot hit high notes anymore. You okay there? I told him there was no way I could fill her shoes. I just screwed things up even more. You think so? To me, they definitely improved, even though you were singing kind of weird there. So you noticed too, huh? I was too nervous. Keisuke? Keikun immediately stands up, his whole body going stiff as soon as Kagaho-san walks into the room. Yes. Are you alright? I could tell you were pretty tense over there. You too? I knew I was doing bad, but it really... But was it really that terrible? Actually, I couldn't call you terrible by any stretch of the word. That said, I did notice you looking pretty tense and uncomfortable, so I figured that might be negatively impacting your performance. 
I... It really was. I've seen Kun sing before, and he's much better than that. For Yuichi-san! So it's as I thought, huh? The raven crosses his arms, idly scratching at his chest and looking past us with a look of worry wonderment. Kagaho-san? Oh, sorry, did you say something? His attention snaps back to Keisuke, his brow furrowing. Are you alright? You don't usually get lost in thought. No, everything's alright. I was just considering some things. May I ask what those things are? You may not. Uh, oh, sorry. Kagaho chuckles, giving the nervous hair a few friendly pats on the shoulder. Don't worry, it's nothing major. I just prefer to keep my thoughts private, that's all. Still, I enjoyed performing with you, even if it was just a rehearsal. Having your vocals definitely helped the other two concentrate. Even if they weren't back to 100% immediately, I'd like to do it again. You said that. You said it was a one-time thing, remember? Right, right, I did say that. Hey, you go, son! Yes. I hear someone's voice echoing loudly in my ear from the one earbud I still have on. I immediately flinch and instinctively take it out. Iwichi-san, are you alright? Yeah! Someone just shouted really loudly into the mic, that's all. Keikun notices my sudden movement and walks up to me, examining me with a look of worry on his face. Yeah, it looks like Ichigo's here. The three of us look out the window and see Ichigo's figure immediately getting mobbed by the three remaining members. Let's go. We should see what was the result of the negotiation. Y yeah mm, Wait until everyone's here. As soon as we walk into the recording booth, Ichigo's eyes fall on us. Nah, nah, she, she's not high, bitch. It's not high, bitch. It's high, girl. As soon as we walk into the recording booth, Ichigo's eyes fall on us. Ah, there you two are. Oh, and we have a guest, too. Hi there, Michi Miyakun. Hi there, Minazuki. Sorry for the intrusion. It's no intrusion. If you're a friend of one of us, you're a friend of all of us. Ichigo-san, how's the meeting with Yurata? Keikun ignores all pleasantries and immediately asks the main question he's had on, mind, on his mind. The calico cat smiles knowingly. It went well. He, he's agreed to speak with the other clubs that had approached him for a spot in the gym building. He says if we can sort things out with them, he'll let us know. F he'll let us use it for, his, for our concert. Yes! That's awesome! I immediately cover my ears as the monkey's booming voice echoes inside the room. I'm not even the only one to do it. Hey, use your inside voice, you airhead. This is a closed soundproof room. You don't have to yell. S sorry. His spirits immediately deflate as he begins to get chastised by his colleague. The others in the room ignore their little show, focusing on their own conversations. Ichigo-san, I got you the book you asked for in my bag. Oh, thanks. Give it to me once we're done with rehearsal for the day. Kay. Kay. Hey, Kagaho. Sorry I'm late. Did things go well without me around? Not as well as I'd hoped, but I got Keisuke to do the vocals in your place while you were away, and that made things slightly better. Kagaho-san. Her eyes immediately turned to Keikun, a beaming smile on her face. Really? Oh, thank you so much for the help, Keichan. It was nothing. Also, please don't call me Keichan. I'll just go get changed real quick, and then we can have uh, get back to our rehearsal. All right, try not to slip and break your neck in the bathroom. That would be one glorious way to die, wouldn't it? The raven chuckles, crossing his eyes and looking up to her and looking her up and down with a raised eyebrow and a smile. It sure would be. I can already picture the newspaper headlines. Keep the material girl down. You know what? You know what? No. No. Just for that. Let me let me just can can I find it? It it hurts my vo it hurts my voice though sometimes. But I don't give a shit because I so bad want to material girl. I so bad just want to just slay. It sure would be. I can pi already picture the newspaper headlines. You're too old-fashioned, Kagaho. No one buys newspapers anymore. I still do. Hence why I said old-fashioned. Anyway, I'll be right back. If you guys will excuse me, I'm going to go outside for some air. All right, we'll start again in five. Make sure you're back by then. A sure thing. Keikun grabs my arm and leads me out of the room with him in a rush. Hey, uh, what's going on? Uh, nothing, nothing. I just needed a little breather. Singing for them was really overwhelming. I can imagine. You started good, though. I certainly hope so. One way or another, these are people who actually know about music. They're not just some rank amateurs that have no idea what they're doing. They're all good. You certainly have a way of being negative about everything. Sorry. Uh, by the way, what was that conversation between Minazuki and Kagaho? The whole slip and break your neck thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Hiya. <laughs> Welcome to Material Girl. Oh, that. They always joke around with each other like that. Not always that morbid, though. Sounds weird if you ask me. I like you have any room to talk. Look at how you usually joke around with Yurata, Mizuguchi-san, and I. I don't think I've ever gone that far with my jokes, though. You're only one step short of it, though. Hell no. <laughs> now you're the one laughing at my expense. Sorry, I just found it funny. Thanks for the help, though. Help? What, well, if anything, did I do to help? You have no idea how nervous during the time I was singing there. It's still, talking to you helped calm me down a bit, so thanks for that. I still feel like I'm being thanked for doing really nothing, though. I'm just calling it how I see it. Anyway, we should probably head back inside. Have the five minutes already passed? I make a motion to grab my phone from my pocket, but Keikun puts, it, puts his hand on top of mine and stops me. No, it's nothing like that. It's just that I've had enough time to recompose myself, so I think I should head back inside regardless. You're free to stay out here if you'd prefer it, though. Nah, there's no real point to that. I'd rather be inside with you. Plus, my presence really is calming, that I can do some good while at it. Uh, thanks. Alright, that's enough material, girl. Material girl! But Kay-Kun... But Kay-Chan... Don't call me Kay-Chan. But Kay-Chan... I'm a material girl! This is why I'm a degenerate. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> That's enough of that. I feel like I feel like I'm just wearing the joke out. We walk back into the club room, immediately being welcomed to the side of the band amidst an enthusiastic discussion about what songs they should perform at the festival. Kakun and I spend the rest of the afternoon inside the control room, listening to the rehearsal whilst also chatting among ourselves. Once we fi finally finish for the day, we all head back home, wishing each other a good night. All I know is that I now feel really excited about the festival for some reason. I really want to see them performing in a real stage. May 23rd, day 15. Wait, is it Sunday? Is it Sunday? No, it's Tuesday. Ah, ah, ha, ha. One of these days, I'm just going to have to... I think it'll be an after-class stream. One of these days on an after-class stream, as soon as it gets updated, I'll just do the entire thing in Material Girl. I'll just do the entire thing in Material Girl. But honestly, I'm afraid of, like, hurting my throat. Like, uh, causing some pain. Causing some pain in my throat again. Because, like... If I if I do the Material Girl for too long, then I think I might end up start hurting my... Like, like causing a bit of pain in my throat, my vocal cords. Because I, I feel like it's strain... Like, I strain it a bit whenever I do the Material Girl voice. So, like, I, I, I don't want to do it too much. I don't want to do it too much. The area around the station is bustling with activity. Lots of noise and bodies to go around. Many students are heading home after class now, so the majority of this mass of people is composed of them. For some reason, Kaykun asked me during lunch hour to meet him here 30 minutes after class. I have no idea what he called me, but since he seemed to need help, I didn't hesitate to come. Yuichi-san, over here. I hear Kaykun's voice calling me from behind. Once I turn around, I see the familiar white hair followed closely by a fox. Vic-kun? You're here too? We! I mean... Yes. He's actually the reason I called you over today. He is? How so? He wanted my help navigating through the city so he could buy a few things. He wanted to join the tennis club once the festival is over, so we're mainly going to the sports goods store. Even though his spoken Japanese is pretty good, he still has problems reading the kanji, so he wanted my help to know what's what. That's pretty nice of you. Although I'm not sure why you called me over, too. I think we've already established that I'm not very good at doing these things, these sort of things by myself. So I thought it'd be good to have you around in case things could go wrong. Is that so? Well, I'll be happy to help. Mercy. I mean, uh, uh, that's thank you in my language. Still trying to get used to speaking in Japanese? W yes, I sometimes revert back to it out of habit. I'm starting to understand why you asked Keikun to help you with this. Yes, that's why I have someone who understands me even if I'm speaking French. Oh, well, it certainly doesn't have hurt to have a competent li liaison. What about Alex? Is he going to be coming with us? After what happened the last time Kakun went out on his own, I certainly think he should. If I had any say in this, he wouldn't. What a b Don't worry, he definitely still remembers what happened last time. I asked Alex to, Alex to meet us at the store. Having a guy that big walking through this crowd would be way too troublesome. Oh, huh. 
You actually thought things through. Good to see you chose to err on the side of caution. Oh, what are you talking about? I always think things through, and I always err to the side of caution. Only do material go, and I'm okay with it. Like, I'm, I'm always fine with it, but, like, like, I don't know, like, it, it's fun. It's fun. Nakaka and Tenya Kondong primes us. Sorry. Explain to me how you got robbed then. Go on. I'll wait. If you say so. Who's this Alex guy? Another student? Who's this Alex guy? Another student? Oh, right. You don't know Alex. He's my personal bodyguard. Well, you even have a personal bodyguard? I've been told that you're rich, but I never thought you'd be that kind of stereotypical rich. I thought you hated stereotypes. I do. It's why this information leaves me so conflicted. Alex is a massive wolf who I'm pretty sure could bench press me with one hand. W wow, really? Damn. Eiyuichi san, please don't make exaggerations like that. He's actually going to take you seriously. Oh, so it was just a joke? Shame. What's the problem? I mean, he is super tall and strong. Maybe, but I very much doubt he could bench press you one-handed. How about I ask him once we meet up? I'm not even going to say anything to that. Oh, well, it's no fun if you just roll over and take it. I think that's highly dependent on the context of the situation. Please tell me that wasn't just... That wasn't innuendo just now. Alright, I won't tell you. Are you mocking me? Damn! Vikun has a sharper tongue than I realized. He is a fox, after all. What did I say about stereotypes? All right, fair enough. Uh, by the way, shall we get going? The crowd over here is quite loud at this time of day. Yes, I think that's a good idea. I nod, making a gesture with my hand that tells Keikun to take the lead. He flashes me an appreciative smile, leading the way to the store. Here you go, Victor. This is a sporting goods store I personally tend to shop at. Oh, please, you only come here because I introduced you to this place. You used to shop online before that. Th that's irrelevant. Sure it is. I didn't recognize the kanji in the letterboard, so either way, I wouldn't have realized what this, what kind of store this was regardless. I mean, let's be honest. If you look at the display case on the entrance, you could see a bunch of sneakers, rackets, and balls. I'm pretty sure you'd be able to tell. Oh, huh. I guess that's true. So you're basically saying that, we're use that we were useless. Either that or Victor is clueless. G <laughs> yes, I said balls. Damn it, I'm not going to be able to say it with a straight face anymore. G Either way, should we go look for Alex? Look, he's almost two meters tall. If he's inside, he's going to be standing out. Or he's going to be standing right behind you. Hi! Oh, fuck! I, I smacked my... I smacked my pop filter. Fuck. Ow. But it doesn't hurt. Hi! Can I climb you? <coughs> the three of us jumped in surprise at the sound of the wolf's deep voice echoing right behind our ears. This is precisely why I'm a degenerate, what I'm about to do. What I'm about to do is precisely why I'm a degenerate. Jesus, Alex, don't do that. You almost gave me a heart attack. If a man my size can sneak behind you, then I'm not really surprised you were pickpocketed. And thanks for the vote of confidence. Damn. You really are big. Alex's attention snaps to Vic Cone, his eyes looking the fox up and down suspicion. Yes, I seem to be getting that a lot lately. Victor instinctively takes a step back, suddenly looking very unsure of himself. Alex, stop glaring at him like that. I have to make sure he doesn't represent a risk to you. For God's sake, Alex, he's, a, he's my senior in school. What kind of risk do you think he can represent? I can't know until I've properly examined him. I examined The fox takes another step back! Oh, hiya. Okay. Wait, he said that? Did he did he say that on his Twitter? Let, let me check. Because I'm kinda curious. Because I've been looking forward to this update. I am looking forward to this update so bad. Oh, on Discord. 
Oh, I don't really check the Far Beyond the World Discord that mu that often. Uh... Hmm. Hang on. I just saw it. Far beyond the world. Woo! The fox takes another step back. This kind of crap is why I avoid taking you with me when I go out. And yet, look how well that turned out. You got robbed. You're never going to let me live that down, are you? Not likely. If you don't, don't if you don't, don't mind, I'm going to show Vic Coon around the store while you guys bicker. W wait, don't leave me alone with him. I leave Victor away. Mostly to give him a break from Alex's intensity Kakun quickly follows behind and the ever loyal alexander accompanies him what kind of gear are you looking for here well i've never really played tennis before so i'd need a good racket maybe a duffel bag to carry my things in too yeah do you have any sneakers taping clothing for you to practice in i do have sneakers they're, they're more like running shoes and I should probably fight buy a few polos, shouldn't I? You don't necessarily have to use polos to play. Any sports shirt works. Hmm. The fox studies the shelves carefully, gently touching the items to get a feel for their weight and textures. It definitely doesn't seem like this is his first time doing this kind of thing. You seem to know what you're doing. Well, yeah, I told you I used to play badminton in France. I'm the one who chose all the gear I used back then. That makes things easier. What led you to come to Japan of all places? As if he only just now remembered Alex's presence in the room, Victor yelps and jumps where he stands, surprised by the larger male's voice. Damn, you really terrified him. Me? What did I do? How can you be that clueless? Alex frowns, looking down at Kakun with confusion. It's fine. I was just a bit surprised. That's all. The fox takes a few deep breaths to calm himself. Suddenly looking up and into Alex's eyes, he attempts to answer confidently. I wanted to broaden my horizons. Immerse myself in a different culture, and I've always been curious about Japan, so... Alexander nods to his words, as if he were silently approving of his reasons. What about you? I mean, you don't look Japanese, and your name definitely isn't Japanese. I got a job here. He responds dryly, leaving a lot to be desired in his answer. Alex has been working for my family for years. I don't quite know how he ended up in our employee, but he's been my personal butler and bodyguard for a long time. The wolf nods in agreement. Damn, so you guys have known each other for years then? I've watched Keisuke grow, yes. He's probably the closest thing I have to a childhood friend. How long have you actually known Alex for? You never really specified, all you've ever said is that it's been years. I've been working for the Rushihara Corporation for nine years. I began my employee right after I turned 18. What, really? Wait, then you're only 27? Yes, why? No way, you're so, so large and bulky and mature looking. You look more like you're in your late 30s. No, I'm only 27. I'd appreciate it if you didn't treat me like I'm some old geezer. It displeases me. I understood! <laughs> Stop laughing at us! Sorry, sorry. It's just, I can't believe you guys thought Alex was that old. Give me a break, okay? I mean, just look at him! He looks way too mature to be in his late 20s. He is a hunk. You're 20? Yeah. It's okay, Bibba girl. Don't. I'm not your Spanish teacher. Como, como esta, shoddy? <laughs> Alex acts like a father figure to Kay. He does. I went through the game files last night. I found Alex and I just I just wanted to just like take 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 his take his tits and just No I'll say it, I don't give a shit. Oh well sorry to burst your bubble, but he's telling the truth. He's not that much older than us. He's still ten years older than you though! And maybe, but I grew up with Alex. There's no one I trust more in the world. Upon hearing those words, a small smile makes its way into Alex's face. 
his tail beginning to sway sideways ever so slightly. But then again, I think I'm the only person who noticed it. I appreciate it. You're welcome. So, Victor, do you have your eye on anything in particular? We're going to leave off here tonight. Anyways, stay safe, have a good night, and I will see you all tomorrow.